So what should be the process that we should follow to get the human computer interaction right? So, so first question to find out or first question to answer is what matters? Uh, which is a slightly broader concern than typically is addressed in the software engineering community. Uh, what matters looks at what are the needs of the users, what are the problems faced by the user uh, in the context of use and whether or not uh, the user can uh, do certain tasks that you are assuming, what are the real needs felt by the user and so on. Uh, so if you look at the railway ticket uh, that we used and just walk through the process. Uh, so typically a uh, uh, brief that comes to a designer is very narrowly defined, design a railway ticket. Uh, and uh, so it's the designer's responsibility to look at the broader context. So very often railway ticket is an example that we are very familiar with. So we may reel off many problems that we face with uh, railway ticket. But very often things are not so obvious. The designer is not very familiar with the entire domain or the context in which the product is going to be used. In which case the designer typically goes to the actual users and finds out what are the problems and what matters to the users. So what is the kind of information that the passenger needs? He needs to understand and needs to be confirmed that he has bought the right ticket for the right train on the right date for the right people. And then uh, he needs to know uh, the time of the train, he needs to know where he needs to sit, which compartment he needs to sit in. Uh, so very often if you, look at the, if you look at the current ticket, there are many of these pieces of information which are either missing or uh, they are cluttered with a lot of other information which may not be useful to the person. So if you look at the ticket right now, uh, it says happy journey and Shubhayatra, that seems to be the most important piece of information. Uh, whereas what should come out is what is the date of the uh, ticket, date of the journey and the name of the train and what time does the train leave and who are the people uh, who, on whose name this ticket has been issued. But there might be other issues, who knows, I might go and talk to some other set of people, there may be t issues related to literacy, uh, lit related to language, such a small number of people in India can read English, so that might be an issue. Uh, so there may be a whole bunch of issues, so I go and identify what are the problems and opportunities. The second question then, so once we have identified what are the needs, what are the problems and what are the opportunities, the second question to answer is how should we respond to this situation. Uh, then I go into the design in the large, I decide, okay, is a railway ticket a best way of designing or uh, giving a solution or do I need to do something else. So for example, can I identify the person just on the basis of photograph and the TC goes with a printed set of photographs just through the, uh, through the uh, compartment and Ensure. So that might be an alternative solution to carrying a railway ticket. Uh, there can be other solutions. It can, there can be a ticket based on a mobile phone, for example. So one can think of this design in the large issues. And then once one has picked up one particular of this, then one can go into the details of how to actually design, how to communicate, uh, what languages to use, what typefaces to use, what colors to use, what sizes of text to use, and so on. What information needs to be communicated? And then if something changes, so for example, if a train is delayed, how to communicate that? So for example, if the ticket is on the mobile phone, I don't have to look at it only as a ticket. I can also give it, give updates about the arrival and the, and the I mean, if, the, if a train gets delayed, then giving that information, train gets cancelled, giving that information, or if my status changes from RAC to confirm, giving that information. So I can really look at it as a dynamic medium. And uh, uh, obviously there is no one straight answer to many of these, so one has to try them out. And then when, and when one is trying out these new things, uh, some of the decisions that we take could be wrong decisions or uh, we might expect it to work in a particular way and it might not work in that way. So in order to be able to be sure about this, what we do at the end is try to answer the question, how are we doing? Have we done the right decisions? So to do that, we put all our decisions in a prototype and then we test it with users. Usually some of the decisions work out, but many of them don't and then we have to go back and revise our decisions. So, so to summarize, how do you arrive at good design in human computer interaction? So firstly, don't make any assumptions about the users. Go to real users in their real context and try to make sure that you understand uh, real users very well. Secondly, uh, Try to respond to design at large rather than de design in the small at first. Try to look at the bigger picture first. Then certainly try alternatives for the smaller picture design in the small. And then come up with a whole bunch of design decisions and prototype those design decisions. Once you have prototyped those design decisions, be sure to test back with the original users 
and make sure that your, your decisions are correct. If you find that some of your decisions are wrong, by all means go back and change those design decisions. And then and only then freeze on the what we call as software requirements.